is another testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. It is good to be back. Uh, it's the first episode of the day. I will do another episode late tonight um, after all the fights are over. We come at you twice a day. Quick Hits comes at you twice a day. Uh, just eight, ten minutes real quick to keep you updated on everything in the world of boxing. Uh, a little bit of a different kind of episode today. I was just reading a boxing scene article um, on um, Stephen Redman. Uh, Edwards, uh, responding to the Kieran Davis draw. Um, Kieran Davis is one of his his fighters who took a controversial draw, um, a very controversial draw with uh, Anthony Durrell last weekend. Um, so I wanted to get into that, um, break that down, um, and, and give you my thoughts on that because I I, I thought Kieran Davis won the fight. Um, I, I I thought not that it was obvious, not that it was necessarily a robbery i don't like really using robbery um but i, I thought kieran davis won the fight i think if you're being fair in a 12 round fight there were certainly seven rounds you would score for kieran davis absolutely um i thought he landed cleaner shots i thought um uh, and edwards had some so i want to read some quotes from edwards um and, and let you know what i thought and, and and i kind of agree with uh the bread man here um so he, he was asked, uh, uh, boo, 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 boo. a lot of pundits thought Davis won the fight. Um, what did you think of scores and the outcome? And then uh, Edwards responded, I, I know Kieran won. Being live at the fight, the majority of the staff who can't really say who they thought won said we won off the record. I could tell the team. Durrell was. I could tell the team Durrell was disappointed. Kieran won the fight. It was a tough fight and it was close, but we won. I'm very honest with my fighter, and I was the first to tell Kieran he had lost to Patrick Day. I told him that he was too muscular to make 54, and he should be strong, and it could cost him the fight. In this uh, in this fight right here, I feel he won, and I told him so. Uh, I was told the announcers had Darrell up. I love Joe Goosen and Lennox Lewis. Those are my guys. But what I think happened was they weren't familiar enough with Kieran. They only saw him fight Mark Anthony Hernandez. As a point of reference, and in that fight, he was pressing forward. So when he didn't fight that style, maybe they didn't give him the credit he deserved. I think the same thing happened with the judges. They were familiar; they weren't familiar with Kai. They thought he would press, but he didn't. Okay, that's an astute point. Uh, when you expect someone to fight a certain way, um, and he doesn't, and he fights in a different manner altogether, that could psychologically play on the judges. Again. Joe and Lennox thought he won wide. I didn't see that. They were close rounds, but I think if we're being fair, you could get to 6-6, six, six, you know, draw. But if you do so, you're looking to give rounds to Anthony Durrell. Now, you shouldn't be looking to give rounds to anyone, right? That's not what we do here. We don't look to give rounds to people. We look at the fight, and we score who landed the better work. And in more rounds than not, that's Kieran Davis. I'm not saying it wasn't close. I'm not saying there's not an argument that can be made for Anthony Durrell, but it's a losing argument. You know what I'm saying? You're looking to give him rounds. And, and I, I think it's because people weren't... They knew what we got out of Durrell, and Durrell fought the kind of fight that he fought. Kieran Davis was a little bit an enigma. Like, we didn't exactly know what to expect from him. And when he wasn't pressing vote, when he wasn't coming vote, when, when he was out boxing it, and Durrell, people were surprised by that, I suppose. I think it's an astute point, and I, I think there's something to it. Now, where does he go from here? Does, does, does Breadman tell him... Um, that he can't fight that anymore, that he's got to press forward if he wants to win rounds on the judge's scorecard? Does he try to adjust to him? It, 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 it's like when a pitcher is pitching and the umpire is squeezing him, right? He's not giving him the outside corner, let's say. The pitcher's got two choices. He can keep going to the outside corner and hope the ump adjusts to him, or he can throw it over the plate, right? And let the hitter hit it. it it's, it's, it's a tough situation. And Kieran Davis is and Stephen Bregman are kind of in that spot. Um, 
It's Kieran won this fight. I mean, that should propel him into a top ten fight. If it does or if it doesn't, I I, I don't know. But he deserved the fight. He deserved the decision. And I think objectively, if you go back and watch the fight, you turn the volume down, and you sit there, you just, just score who landed the better shots. It's Kieran Davis. Um, I know a lot of people didn't watch this fight. A lot of people didn't watch it intently because it was on against Canelo. I, I, I get that. But go back and watch the fight. Let me know what you think. And what I also want to talk about is what's next for Kieran Davis. Uh, Breadman says he can fight at either 60 or 68. Um, so, so there are good options there. Um, the one thing that came to my mind was Derevchenko. Uh, Danny Jacobs at sixty-eight, I think, would be a good fight. And I, I think these are, are interesting fights, but I, I really like the Keon, uh, the Derevchenko fight for both guys. Right, it, it propels the guy who wins the fight into the title picture, and I can see either guy winning. Um, if he can make sixty-eight, he could be a force. Because uh, you remember he used to fight at fifty-four, Keon Davis, but he's, he, he's just far too small. Stature, height-wise, for that division. Um, I, I like the way that he fought at 68, but if he can come down to 60, I mean, I think he's too small for 68. At 54, he's too bulky, and and, and like uh, Brad said, 260, I think he's a bit too short for the division. If he can come down to uh, 160, I, I it, that's a perfect fit for him. An interesting fight, though, right? Like, and Bregman has some success here. If... Uh, Jarrett Hurd goes to 160, which all rumors says he's going to. How about Breadman gets another shot to beat um, Jarrett Hurd at 160? I like that. I didn't know they would throw Hurd right into that. Um, but that's an interesting fight. There, there are other good fights for him to take at 160. Um, but we'll see. Uh, we'll throw him in, it, 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 well, he's moving up. Um, I'm just looking at some names right now. Rob Brandt would be a fun fight. They could do that at 60 or 68. Hugo Santanio Jr. would be a good test room. You know, I'd like to see him in, in, in a coma against Santanio or Derevchenko, I guess, would be a main event. Um, but there are good names from definitely to fight. I'm looking at the PBC side. Rob Brandt. I, I like that. If they could do a Rob Brandt fight, I think he's a free agent now, isn't he, Brandt? Brandt or Derevchenko, I think, would be good fights. Or if Heard wants to come up to 160, I would love that fight, too. But let me know what you guys think. Did you think Kieran Davis earned the decision? I know Joe and Lennox on the broadcast... Thought that um, Darrell won, which I didn't understand when they were saying that. I, I thought um, it was close, but Kieran was eking out the, the rounds. I thought he, he, you know, if you're sitting there objectively, yeah, Kieran won that round. Um, but let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Um, remember, Quick Hits comes at you twice a day. It's 8 to 10 minutes a day, two episodes a day. We'll be back tonight after all the action to break that down. I don't know exactly what the topic's going to be, but we'll talk about the action that happens tonight. Uh, shout out to Clarissa Shield to uh, unify 154-pound women's division. Um, congratulations to her. Uh, it is March 6th, 2021. Ivan Calderon is still not in the Boxing Hall of Fame. We need to make that change. Let's get the Iron Boy in. And the class of 2021 from Texas to the world. Thank you and God. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3 Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.